Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh. This is Overlanding Now. And it's time for day two of the custom bed build for the 2022 Ram Power Wagon full size Overland build that we are doing on the channel. So, if you guys watched the last video, and if you haven't, I'll put that here. And that last video was kind of just the layout. Over the past couple of days, I have been working to come up with a rock solid system. And based on a lot of people's feedback about what we're doing, I was able to get more information to be able to do this even better. So one thing, check valve. That was a comment and it's genius. That same comment, I'm also now using all nylon lead free barbs. Um, because I had a bunch of, what was it? Copper or brass. I had a bunch of brass and has lead in it. Didn't know that, now I know. So over to this side, I have pretty much everything laid out. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be sanding the plywood. Um, I've already got a couple of things stained. I have some self-tapping screws that I got at the hardware store that I'm gonna use to make sure that wood stays connected to the 8020 aluminum extrusion. So a lot of things have kind of changed and I'm gonna hop over here and start working through everything that we're doing today. Um, and I'm gonna try to film it. It's kind of a pain to do this, but I think it's gonna be helpful. So hopefully I do a good job. Um, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel so you come along for more adventures and be a part of all the builds that we do. Let's, uh, let's get started on this battery system and full on onboard water setup. All right, so previously what we were using are these little angles, one inch angles, well it's technically three quarter, with these holes. And I had them secured in here with T-nuts previously. But because there's gonna be batteries and there's going to be stuff on here that I don't want moving around, I don't have a whole lot of faith in the little tiny wood screws that we were gonna be using to attach this portion to the 8020. Now I've already stained this or sealed this and I've already sanded it down. So it's already, it's ready for me to put it in. So what I wanna do in my theory here is I want to slide this in just like that. And now that's gonna sit and that's gonna house the two batteries. This is gonna be my drain. I'm not sure if you can see that, uh, but this will be the drain that comes out. Now, as opposed to using these small angles and the tiny wood screws, what I went and got was these button head self-tapping Phillips um, screws. Now I'll be able to drill this directly into the 8020. I'll be able to get it flush with this button head and that is going to be a much more secure option than what we were going to do before. So that's what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to put four, four of these self-tapping screws through here to hold this down. This is where the batteries will sit. And then what we'll do is we'll put the back plate on. Now this portion of the half inch plywood is kind of holding this in. And if you can see this, we have a ratchet strap holding down the tank itself. I was going to put some kind of aluminum uh, bracket around it. I was gonna make 80-20 and just kind of box this in to hold it, but this is way stronger. And more importantly, it's not permanent. If something happens and I think I need to fix it, I don't wanna go too far in building it. So. This is what I decided to use for now. We can take this out, this thing is rock solid, and this is gonna weigh a significant amount of money, I'm sorry, a significant amount, so we don't have to worry about it moving around too much. And then with this piece of wood being in here, it can't slide this way, it can't slide that way. So I think we have a pretty solid option and I'm, I'm happy with that. So what I'm gonna do now is put the two screws in here um, on either side and then we'll get this back plate mounted for the inverter as well as the charge controller and the fuse box. Alright, 
I was able to get this one down. This one stripped out a little bit, but these other three are super solid. So I can live with it. I just don't want to make another hole. Um, I just don't want to touch it. I'm going to leave it how it is. Um, and if I ever have to come back, I can take these out and redo it. But I would doubt that with two batteries, this is going to go anywhere, but it's a much more secure fit. Now for this piece. So this is what's going to go back here. Now we're going to have to maneuver this a bit because I had this originally cut for a different size. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to rip this down and then on the back we have these, I believe they are these type of brackets where they're screwed into the 80-20 and I'm going to put two more up top and probably two on the sides. I'm going to overdo this and I'm going to screw the wood screws directly into this to hold it. Now this will hold the inverter, the charge controller, um, as well as the fuse box. So I have the option of doing it a little bit differently, but because this was pre-cut and kind of built for this specific circumstance, I'm going to stick with this. Um, and then we will get this ripped down, get everything cut the way we need it, and we'll be able to install this, and then we'll be able to move on to what we have to do today in the bed of the truck. So now that I got, I got it sanded down, I am going to hit this with some sealer on the edges. Um, I just want to make sure it fits and it's flush before I go any further. I probably shouldn't have sanded yet anyways, but what I used was a 220 grit sandpaper and a Dewalt um, hand sander. So I will put some stuff in the description. I'll try to put everything in the description that I'm using today to make it easy for you guys if you're trying to do this. But now we just got to see if it fits and if so, we'll get it bolted up. Okay, we're good. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to leave a little bit of gap in between all four sides. Um, I want, it's not gonna have much airflow back there, but I want to have as much space for heat to escape as possible because with the batteries and the solar charger, everything has a fan and it'll be running, but um, this space could get warm, so the more space I have for air to get through, the better. So I'm gonna add another bracket on all four sides, use these two brackets. I'll probably slide them down because it has a previous hole. And then I will get all of this screwed in. But before I do, I'm gonna hit this with the sealer real quick, just so I have all the edges done. And then uh, we'll get it screwed on. So I'm not sure if you guys can tell too much, but this sealer has a little bit of a yellow tone to it. Um, it says it's clear. This is Valspar One Coat Exterior Sealer. This is what I use for the outdoor climbing wall that I built on the side of my garage, and I just had it left over, so I'm gonna use it. If this was a finished side that people were going to see, then I wouldn't have used this, but this is just a protectant, a protectant so I'm going to protect it. Um, and then what I have is just one of these small foam, I guess you could call it a brush, not really a brush, but that's what I'm going to use to put the sealer on here. Now the reason I like using these is because 
They're a lot less sloppy than a brush, and it covers a lot better than a brush. And generally, I would stop and let this dry and maybe sand it. Um, definitely sand it if it was going to be a finished side, but I don't plan on taking a break and letting it dry. So I'm just going to put a nice, thick, even coat on here. That way, any water penetrates should roll right off and I won't have any issues with rotting wood because rotting wood would not be a good situation in the back of the power wagon. All right, so since I have to use the roll-in T-nuts on some of these places, like here I have to use roll-in T-nuts, here I have to use roll-in T-nuts, here I have to use them, here I can use the slide-ins. But what I wanna do is down here, these brackets only have two holes. So I'm gonna switch to the brackets with four holes. And what that'll allow me to do is it'll give me a couple of extra spots to screw into the wood. Like I said, I'm not overly confident in these wood screws. So I'm gonna use multiple to keep everything fastened down as well as I can. Um, I'm hoping that that will be enough because I don't wanna to have to be taking this thing apart all the time to try to find where the issues are. And there are gonna be things hanging here um, on the opposite side, so I wanna make sure it's secure. Now, because I'm rolling the, using these tiny roll-in T-nuts, I'm putting a small lock washer on these little button head screws. And that's so I can get as tight of a bond as possible. So that's what I'm gonna do now. All right, so now I have all of my points, mounting points in. I'm gonna slide my backing inside the box and then I'm gonna use my half inch wood screws, maybe three quarter, I'm not entirely sure um, what I'm gonna use here. And then I'm gonna fasten all these down and then we should have a pretty well constructed box. So what I'm gonna do is I'm using these number 10 by three quarter wood screws. And because I'm trying to create as close to symmetrical as possible and even space around, I'm just gonna grab a couple shims and I'm gonna throw these up under there. That way I have proper spacing in the back and then I can adjust the side to side as I see fit. So some of these brackets are bowing out towards me. So I'm gonna take this out, I'm gonna fix those real quick. So I have as flush as possible as a mounting surface. Okay. These always get stuck in here if you over torque them, so something to... These little butt head screws are... They can take some wrenching, but they're not... They're not great. Alright. Let's go back. Okay, so I got a decent amount of spacing. I'm just gonna get one in so it sets. I should probably be drilling a pilot hole, but I think I'll be okay. Hopefully it doesn't split this right down the middle because then we would have a whole nother situation. All right, so what I had to do was use a lock washer and a washer just to give me a little bit of space between um, the bracket and the screw head. The shim idea was a terrible idea from the beginning and I should have known that. The second I put that screw into it, it break, and I was like, man, that was dumb. So now that I have everything connected, this thing is rock solid. I have two in each one of the large brackets and one in each one of the smaller bottom brackets. And this thing is ready 
to have the electrical components mounted to it. Now the last thing I have to do today, I'm going to try to slide this down so I don't have to move, but I need to create a spot up here for the water pump itself. So I'm going to figure out a way, cut some aluminum to make a little bit of bridge over here so I can mount a piece of wood up there and then I will have a fully functioning, ready to install um, battery and water box. All right, since I've had this box that we're building right now done already once, I have a lot of these pieces laying around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm coming up off here and I'm gonna be able to put a piece of wood right here in the center. So the, I only have to cut one piece of aluminum at 13 inches for this side and then I will be able to fasten everything down and create the platform for the um, pump to sit on. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get my miter saw fired up, cut this one to 13 inches, and then fasten everything together and measure for my piece of wood that I need for up, t up here and uh, get that situated, get it stained, or I'm sorry, get it sealed and sanded, and then we should be able to put that on. So on these ones, I'm using the inside black, inside corner brackets, and I'm trying to get this as tight as I can, tighten these up, and then I'm going to slide it as close to down here as I can. Then I'll square this side up with this side. That way I have a nice square platform to put that piece of wood. And then I should be ready to get the wood started. All right, so I got both of these sides on. It's exactly 12 and a half on either side. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to cut a piece of wood to go over top here so I can mount that water tank, I'm sorry, the water pump on top. And then I'm probably going to use, probably gonna use the same system I used with the self-tapping screws just because it stresses me out a little bit because we're going right above this water tank but it is going to provide me the most support. And with this water pump being up here, it's still relatively heavy. It's probably three or four pounds, but I wanna make sure that everything's locked in. And then I'm gonna screw the water pump down and we can move to the truck or we can finish the plumbing. I said truck earlier, I don't know which one I'm gonna do. I just wanna get this piece of wood on top of here and then uh, we can go from there. All right, so now that I have my piece, we are 12 and a half by 13. And what I wanna do is, I'm gonna have to sand down these edges and I'm gonna have to seal this. Um, this is also has the potential to get water on it and I don't want to ruin it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand both sides, I'm gonna taper down these edges a little bit and then seal it, go start prepping the truck bed for that to be installed in it. And that's, uh, that's all that we can do. We're gonna have to wait a little bit and sand in, in between each one of these coats just to try to get it to uh, penetrate the wood as much as possible. So 
tapering down these edges and these corners is definitely not necessary, but for me, it's kind of like a, uh, the finishing touch type thing. I like to have those corners rounded and these edges smooth. I think it just looks nicer. Nobody's going to see it, um, but I just like the look of it more and I'm willing to spend the extra time to get these edges rounded down before I put the sealer on there. It's just something that I like to do, but it's absolutely not necessary for anyone. <laughs> All right, while that piece of wood is out there drying, I have it in the sunlight, leaning on the boat, I am going to start installing these fittings into the water tank. Now, this is a 3 8 barb to a male, 3 8 half inch male NPT. I could be wrong. And I'm really new to the whole, this, whole plumbing thing that we got going on. So I'm going to mess it up quite often, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna put some thread tape on here and then I'm going to go ahead and get these fastened in there. That way those can sit and be done and I don't have to worry about that because I don't, I don't yet know how long of a run of the high pressure hose I'm going to need. I know I have enough of it, but I don't wanna start cutting hose and getting all of that messed, messed around with until I have pretty much an exact idea of how much I'm gonna to need to get from here to the rear of the truck where everything's gonna be mounted. And then before I even get there, I need to get these installed and then I need to test this and make sure none of this stuff leaks because I don't wanna get it in the truck just to find out that it leaks and then have to take it all back out. It would just be a huge pain. All right, so this one up here, I'm gonna use for my vent. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to also use, I don't need to use the high pressure hose. I have some other hose that I could probably use. But either way, I'm just gonna have some hose attached and I'm gonna have this running out of the bottom of the power wagon. And the reason for that, so it can get air in and get air out when it's filling and that pump is pumping. Because if this is all sealed off, it's just going to suck in on itself and then I'm not gonna get any water pressure. So I'm gonna get this installed in here. This will be for my vent. And then that is all the fittings other than the fill tube that are gonna go on this box. So while I'm waiting for the stain to dry, I put the second coat on it. Um, I think that's all I'm gonna do. I may do one more, but I was able to get the high pressure hose attached with these two hose clamps um, to the tank. I have my, oh God, what's it called? Check valve, Lord. I have my check valve um, ready to go. So all the water will come through here as the water goes into the pump that will be sitting up here. And once I turn off the pump, the water will stop, not allowing it to go back into the tank. So when it pulls again, it'll start pulling water immediately and it won't have to try to pull from the tank. So check valve installed. Now up top, I put some shims underneath these pieces of aluminum on top of the water tank because I'm going to be drilling with those self tapping screws again through here. And I really don't want these aluminum uh, pieces to bend or flex while I'm doing that. So I'm gonna grab the piece of wood. We're gonna get this set up. We're going to install the water tank. We're gonna hook everything up. And then uh, I'm gonna move on and possibly get to some of the electrical components today. I'm not really sure. Don't know how long it's gonna take. It's starting to get late. So that's what I'm gonna work on. And hopefully we can get this water side completely wrapped up today. And if 
hopefully maybe move on to some electrical. All right, so the lighting is probably going out on me a little bit, but so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to connect and put in the water pump up top. Now, I am just barely going to clear this, so what I need to do is make sure that I have just enough space to get the piece of wood over top of this. And what I need to do is I'm using these inch and a quarter construction screws. And again, I am putting a couple of washers on top and on these rubber feet, I can drill this directly down into this wood. So I'm gonna get it orientated in the way that I need it. And then once I have that done, I will uh, get everything screwed down and this water, this water side will be completely finished. All right, so it appears that this is not going to clear, but luckily I have about a quarter inch of space between the top of this aluminum and the water tank that I left myself in case I would need it. So I'm going to bring this down all the way. I'm gonna to have to push this water tank out, push this top section down as far as I can and get this to clear. All right, after a little bit of muscle and a hurt wrist, I was able to get it to fit. I mean, it's, it barely fits. This half inch piece of plywood almost got me, but everything is good. So what we're gonna do is now that I have that whole situation under control, I'm gonna put this in, lock it down. Here we go, there we go. All right, so now we're good there. So I just need to be able to have, I don't know how well you can see this, try to move everything out of the way. So now my, all coming off my check valve, I'm gonna use a piece of hose, maybe this one, and get it into the inlet. This on the other side will be the outlet. It'll go, come off of here, 90 back. So this is probably gonna have to go back over here. It'll 90 back and attach to the aluminum. 90 towards the end of the truck. I'm gonna go ahead and get this completely plumbed in, um, get the pump down where it needs to go, get it locked in, and I'm gonna call it a night. Um, it's been, it's always something. You're always working through a new issue, especially when you're doing something you've never done. And these videos are really hard for me to make because I don't have somebody else to like bounce personality off of. So like I'm trying to think, film, and come up with solutions to a new problem all the time, but I think it turned out well. Um, I'm hoping that these videos are helpful for you guys. If you enjoy them, please like them, um, share them with somebody, leave a comment, let me know what you think. If, if you've got a better idea, once again, the last video we posted, people were extremely helpful and I don't think you understand how grateful I am to have people that are willing to help and not be condescending about it. So I'm gonna get after this, I'm gonna plumb this in. On the next video, we'll talk about the electrical. I'll show you how everything is finished up here in one moment, um, and I appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you.